Hey what's up guys, Rev here. I have to say, today's video is a really interesting one. It's like a long-awaited sociology research project that I've anticipated happening one day, and now it's unfolding before our very eyes. That project asks several questions. What happens when you push the gotcha player too far? Do gotcha players have a limit on what kind of treatment they'll tolerate to continue playing their favorite game? And what happens? when the wealthy game developers double down on their greedy decisions after being called out by their cash cows? Well, we're finding out the answers to those questions because Genshin Impact has been imploding over the past few days, the culmination of many greedy decisions made by its developers, and honestly, it's a long time coming. To say Genshin Impact's one-year anniversary event has been a dumpster fire would be an insult to dumpsters that have caught fire. And let me clarify. One year anniversaries are a big deal for gacha games. As a recovering fake Grand Order player, I can tell you it's pretty much expected that one year anniversaries will provide players with meaningful in-game rewards. After all, these are free to play games. Yes, the developers laid out the content, but 100% of their business is voluntary financial contributions from their player base. And the payout is definitely far greater than the cost of development. And whether it's Genshin Impact, Fate Grand Order, Azure Lane, or whatever your drug of choice is, free-to-play gacha games owe their literal tens of millions of dollars of revenue to nobody but their players. Most gacha game developers, and from my own experience playing them, understand how important it is to keep your players, aka your entire revenue source, happy. Anniversary events are an easy one, a low-hanging fruit. Provide some good in-game rewards to give your players a nice little pat on the back, Thank them and keep them happy and make them feel like their dedication to your game is worth it. Even if that means spending lots of money on, well, the RNG based chances of getting pixels on their screen. But nonetheless, Genshin Impact has pushed this formula beyond its breaking point. A breaking point I never even thought I would see in gacha games if I'm being honest. And with the immense popularity and success of the game, Fans were justifiably expecting the one year anniversary of its release to be quite rewarding for players. After all, Genshin Impact was one of the most successful games of any genre, let alone free to play, for the year 2021, making its developers millions upon millions of real money, not pixelated gacha money. So spoiler alert for anyone naive enough to believe otherwise, but it appears that MiHoYo took the blue pill and decided to shaft its own fan base for a nice anniversary present. Now here's the breakdown of the weekly rewards following this historic one year event, and in case you aren't familiar with Genshin Impact, these rewards are absolute hot garbage. The literal equivalent of getting like 10 pesos in real life. It's just insulting. And yes ladies and gentlemen, it gets even worse. In true gacha fashion, the underwhelming rewards from this one year anniversary are of course, and very fittingly, RNG based. Come on man, like I get the corporate hustle and everything, but you gotta be kidding me at this point. I even tried to defend MiHoYo yesterday when Chinese players were harassing a related voice actress for voicing characters of a quote unquote trash character, but I guess defending a voice actress is much different than defending MiHoYo, so I feel comfortable taking a nice dookie on them now. So the rest of this video is dedicated towards showing the recent downfall of the creators of Genshin Impact, MiHoYo as a whole, and showing things that players who are upset about a game can do to show their dissatisfaction with gaming companies in a productive way. I'm honestly pretty proud of the Genshin Impact player base for standing up and saying enough of the greed and that they deserve better than this. And it looks like Genshin Impact players have been taking matters into their own hands and expressed their dissatisfaction in really the only ways possible through Google Play, and of course, social media as well. So move number one, the Google Play Store. If you think this store, or the ratings of games is meaningless, it's not. It's basically the only place games like this show up, and bad ratings can leave quite the stain on a game or a company. And I'll show you in a little bit why players are almost forced to voice their concern on Google Play, because MiHoYo is doing its best job to censor backlash. But first, Here's some more background info on the situation. Genshin Impact players review bomb Google Play rating as anniversary backlash peaks. The Google Play score is a live amalgamation and will likely even out soon enough. While I don't know about how legit that is, I could also see negative reviews magically disappearing once things die down, something Google has done for big developers before, 
but nonetheless. At the time of writing, this article being from the day before this is recorded, Genshin Impact's Google Play rating is waffling between 1.9 and 2.0 out of 5, and it may well dip lower than that before this blows over. As recently as September 16, it was sitting at a comfortable 4.6 with 2 million reviews. That, ladies and gentlemen, is quite the drop. Now, I've always thought that review bombing a game, especially out of the blue, can be a pretty suspect move. Like someone enjoyed the game for so long and then something happens and all of a sudden they switch to a negative review or even make their first review ever. Like I would hope something really serious would happen to make someone do that, not just a minor mistake or a bad development choice in the moment. Sometimes it even becomes trendy to do these things when people are angry about a game and it gains some momentum on social media and some people might just bandwagon the effort for, well, memes. So in these cases, those reviews are reactionary and probably hold little value behind them. And of course, some of these negative reviews about Genshin Impact follow this pattern, but there is something very different here. This is a list of all the censorship MiHoYo is currently doing to hide backlash about their game. And they are censoring every aspect within their control, from Reddit to Discord, and of course, in-game as well. My point being, if people can't complain about or even fairly criticize Genshin Impact in the usual forums, players are left with few legitimate options to voice their dissatisfaction. Hence, review bombing the game on Google Play. In another twist, Genshin Impact isn't the only MiHoYo game being targeted with these review bombs. Honkai Impact 3rd is also seeing one-star reviews mentioning Genshin Impact's anniversary. And MiHoYo's response to all this has been, well, silence really just adding fuel to the fire. Recent social media posts and promotional videos by MiHoYo have been receiving a high volume of dislikes and negative comments, even getting ratioed in some cases. And this whole controversy is underpinned by the fact that this game is developed in China, so who knows what additional censorship is going on through that. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Genshin Impact. Is it over? Will they recover from this? Most likely, but the damage has been done. Of course, there are many players who are upset now, just to come back in a week or so when things die down, but from my experience, once there is an air of dissent in these sorts of things, people feel emboldened to continue voicing their opinion, and they feel like they don't have to put up with as much anymore. So we'll just have to wait and see where this goes. But for now, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.